everybody! Welcome to the Jada in Stitches show. Thanks for visiting our website. Today we're going to make this super cute mug cozy. This is great for cold drinks or hot drinks because it's made out of cotton. It's cute because it looks like a kitten and it's really quick and simple to make. So let's get started! The materials you need for your cute little mug cozy are some cotton yarn, very very little. This is a scrap project so you can use the remnants of any cotton ball you might have. You're going to need a little bit of embroidery floss or skinnier yarn for the nose and the mouth. And if you're using embroidery floss, you want to have an embroidery needle. Scissors, uh, a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook or a G6 to get those nice small stitches. And lastly, you're going to want a pair of buttons or beads for his eyes. And once you've got that, we can get going. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Once you have your slip knot made, you can slip it on your hook. Make sure it's not too tight or too loose. And you're going to begin by chaining 34. Once you have chained 34, make sure it's not twisted and then bring it around so that you can work directly into the first chain you made. You're going to single crochet into the, your first chain and in each chain around. But before you really get going, if you've got your coffee mug handy, I want you to check it. So you're going to do a couple of single crochets, just maybe the first two, and then pull up on your loop, grab your mug, and slip it up onto the bottom to just check your gauge. I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook, or a G6, and a worsted weight cotton yarn. So 34 stitches for me is perfect, but it might be different for you and your stitch tension. So make sure that it fits. If it's too loose, take out a couple of chains. If it's too tight, add a couple of chains. And once you've got <laughs> a circumference that works for you, you can slip your hook back in and continue single crocheting. You're going to single crochet in each chain all the way around. So your foundation chain row, in my case, 34 chains, will be the same number of stitches that you have at the end of your first row. You're going to continue working in the round, so you're not joining your rows with a slip stitch, you're just going to single crochet directly into the next stitch all the way around and keep going until you've single crocheted seven or eight rows. Why seven or eight, Jada? <laughs> well, let me show you. This is a seven row kitty cozy. It's a little bit skinnier, but it's great on a cold drink or a cold beverage container because you can still see into the cold beverage container to see your pretty beverage. It also gives you just enough of a grab that it's not too, too small or too, too big. But an eight row kitty cozy, or this one here, gives you a little more grabbable space, which is kind of preferable on a hot beverage container. So eight rows for a hot beverage container cozy, seven rows for a cool beverage container cozy. So I'll let you go. Single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Keep going for seven or eight rows and I will see you at the end of seven or eight rows. I've completed eight rows and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight rows for a hot cozy. You can clearly see where you started, so you can make sure that your rows end sort of somewhere in alignment with that starting point. If you don't like the way that looks, you can always go ahead and put an extra row around the bottom. And I went ahead and I did one. This is seven rows, so this is a cool kitten cozy. And I've added rows in a different color so you can sort of see how that looks. And this makes the bottom more even. So obviously if you use the same color, like you did here, this will just be completely even and you won't see any changing in your rows. So you can go ahead and do that if you like. But we're finished the main part of the cozy. So you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. That just closes off that row nice and neatly. Grab your scissors, fasten off, cut a short tail. You don't need too much. You're going to grab your yarn needle and you're going to weave in your tail just to make everything nice and neat and tidy. So you can go ahead and do that before we put on our ears. 
We're going to begin with another slip knot. This is so we can put the ear portion of our kitty cozy on our kitty cozy. <laughs> now, once you've got your slip knot on, pick up your cozy and take a look at the back. And you know this is the back because you can see sort of where you started and where you finished. Try to put it in the middle. Sort of squeeze it on both sides so that you're looking at your start in the direct middle, or the very middle of your cozy. Flip it over, and we're going to attach our ears to the front. So I like to find what I think is about the middle stitch. That looks like it here. Just eyeballing this. And I'm going to count. One, two, three, four. I'm going to count back four. And I'm going to join my yarn in that stitch. And by joining, I'm going to use a slip stitch. There we go. And now we're ready to put on our ears. So we're going to begin by chaining four. One, two, three, four. Skip the first chain from the hook, identify the second chain, and slip stitch into that chain. Identify the next chain and single crochet into it. And identify the last chain or the first one you made and you're going to half double crochet into it. So wrap your yarn around your hook first, slip your hook through the chain to pick up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook and you can wrap your yarn and pull back through all three. Now, we're going to attach our ear to the top of our cozy. So you can do one of two things. You can make a skinny ear and attach it to the next stitch after the one that you attached your yarn to, or you can make a slightly wider ear and attach it two over. So this is a skinny ear. It's kind of cute. You've attached it to the very next stitch. And this one's a slightly wider ear. So you skip over a stitch and attach it to the second one. So I'm going to make a wider ear. I'm going to skip over the next stitch and slip stitch into the stitch after that. And I'm working over my tail, but you don't have to. You can just weave that in later when you're done. There, ear attached. Now we want to zip across boom, 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 and make a second ear. So we're going to slip stitch into the next three stitches. That's just to give our kitty a little bit of space between her ears. There we go. And now we're going to begin the second ear. So I'm going to work into the next stitch by so slip stitching into that one. And then I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to chain four. Skip the first chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Single crochet into the next chain. Half double crochet into the last chain. And then for the skinny ear, you're going to slip stitch into the very next stitch along your cat. Or for the thicker ear, you're going to slip stitch into that one after that. So I'm going to skip two stitches for a thicker ear. There we go. All you need to do now is grab your scissors, snip your yarn. Again, you don't need very much. Fasten off, grab your yarn needle, and weave in your tails, and then we can put on the eyes and the nose. First, we're going to put on his eyes. So, I chose buttons, flat-topped buttons, for this particular cozy, and I lined up my buttons on the inside or the middle of my ear, came down about three rows, so there's one, two, three rows, and sewed my buttons on equidistant on the same row in the middle of the ear space. So those are flat-top buttons. I used regular four hole buttons for this one, and I did them in the same place, so right in alignment with the ears. And for this one today, I've got these really cute little heart-shaped beads that I'm going to put on. So same thing, I'm going to align them with my ears. I'm going to come down about three rows. I'm going to grab my needle and thread and sew them on. 
once you've got his eyes on nice and firmly, we're going to put on his nose. So I like to put the nose right in between the eyes and I like to work over top of about a single stitch width and a single row height. So that's what it looks like finished and this is how you can get it started. So look at your eyes, look at the stitches in between them, either right between them or just a bit below, depending on how big of the buttons it is you used. And then you're going to pick a stitch somewhere in the middle. So this one right here, I've got my finger right at the bottom of it, that's going to be my nose guide. So I'm going to bring my yarn in somewhere at the top side, leave a little bit of tail showing at the back because I want to knot things together before I am finished. So I'm just going to hold my finger on that. And I'm going to go across one stitch width. This will be the top or the bridge of my nose. And then I'm going to come out at the bottom, so the bottom point of that stitch. And then I'm going to fill everything in. So this side, I'll go in the top corner and back out through the bottom point, trying not to split my thread. And if you're using sort of a thinner yarn with this, I'm going to go on the other side, then you don't have to do as many stitches. And I'm going to go in the other corner and back out the bottom point. So that is my guide. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of keep going top through the point, top through the point, top through the point, round, 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 until I filled in this entire little area of his nose. So you can kind of hide a few stitches underneath the bridge, as long as you always bring it back out at that bottom point. And you can go back and forth a few times, that'll sort of help fill it in. And once again, I'll show you what that looks like finished. So that's embroidery thread. You can see that I've gone back and forth a couple times and filled it in. And this is what it looks like using, this is the same thickness of yarn. So I just sort of had some scraps in my bag when I was making this little guy. And I just used those. And frankly, I like both. <laughs> so you can use whichever you like, embroidery floss or yarn, and just work back and forth to fill in that nose. And then don't snip your yarn because we're going to put on a quick mouth before we're finished. Once you've finished filling in your little triangular nose, bring your needle back out through the bottom point, and now we're going to put on a simple little mouth. So I like to do one little sort of short stitch to the left and one little short stitch to the right, or right and left, depending on <laughs> what you're looking at. Either way, it's at the bottom corner of the stitch directly below the one I used as my guide for his nose. So I go one way, bring my needle back out through the bottom point of my nose, and then the other way. And that's it. There's my little mouth. Flip it upside down. You should have that extra string hanging out. You can pick up the bottom of a couple of stitches with your needle, just to sort of bring your yarn or your thread back up close to where that other piece is, and then knot your ends together, and you can weave it in just to make it nice and neat and tidy. And there you go, one cute cat cozy for a hot beverage, or a cold one. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in to the show, everybody, and thanks for visiting the website. We will see you again really soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have fun. Bye! <laughs>